my name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Slay the Spire Modded. We're going to be continuing with the next character in the list. So it was Beaked and we'll follow up with Marissa. Uh, we'll actually kick Marissa's Ascension mod basically as high as it can go every single time because we have some real good luck with Marissa and Marissa can get real off the chain powerful. Uh, lose 7 max HP for a random rare relic. I love that. Potato, during your turn, you are immune to damage. I don't know how many self-damaging cards the Ordinary Magician actually has. But... I'm more than willing to find out. I do want to try and go for 3 elites here on the first turn. Not a bad amount of damage for turn 1 right there, if I do say so myself. And... Pretty much any hand should be lethal for us here. Yeah, that'll get it done. Alright, Blaze Away. Add a copy of the last attack you played this turn to your hand. It costs zero this turn. There's also Occultation. Discard your draw pile. Gain one block for each card discarded and one time off. Gain five block. You can't activate Amplify effects this turn and draw an extra card next turn. Um... So I should quickly mention, the Ordinary Magician begins with Mini Hakuro, which is whenever you play a card, gain one charge up. Charge up stacks in sets of eight, and for each set of eight that you have, you double the damage of your next attack. So if you have eight, you do double damage, 16, quadruple, uh, 24, uh, eight times, etc., etc. And you start with a deck that has a Master Spark that has Amplify. Amplify is the effect by which you pay one extra energy, or sometimes two extra energy, in order to trigger an extra effect. Uh, the extra effect here is just more damage, and also a zero-cost card to give us a little bit of charge up. Uh, I'm going to hard pass those. I'd really like to get the Blaze build going on. Ooh, Prussian Blue Paint. You can ask Smith Curses. Smithing a curse removes it from your deck and upgrades a random card in the deck. I am more than happy to take Curses now. Upgrade Master Spark? Hell yes. What a great turn there for us. Yeah, uh, immune to damage in our turn. Not immune to HP damage, but immune to damage makes me think that maybe burns in this deck would be ridiculous. Star Barrage would be really good just for having a relatively thin deck. I may take Star Barrage here just for the ability it will have to carry me for a while. Okay. Happily double defend there. Yeah, Master Spark is the final card of the deck, so... Boom! Just blow the enemy up. Meteonic Shower. Exhaust up to X plus one cards. Deal three damage two times for each card you exhausted, or three times for each burn exhausted. Uh, we want burns before we pick up Meteonic Shower, but I think because we picked up the Star Barrage just to get us through standard fights, we can use the Meteonic Shower to, like, whittle down the deck a little. Damn, was obviously hoping for a hit on the back lane there. It's okay, though. On, oh, there's Master Spark. Okay, not a bad pickup. Not enough to get us a lethal this turn, though. Definitely should have been focusing the sentry in the back lane, though, because... We're not going to be able to do much to it this turn now. It's okay. Star Barrage is going to be a significant amount of damage on it. As long as we get two cards, one of which is an attack next turn. Yeah, we're fine. Beautiful. Actually going to exhaust these for the damage. Trumpet. If you play only attacks in combat, heal 10 HP. That will actually occasionally happen to us. Uh, Super Pesades. 
When this card is drawn, gain energy. If it's exhausted, deal damage. Yeah, we do want to put exhaust effects in the deck. Upgrade the Star Barrage just so I can get through a normal combat a wee bit easier. Okay, X plus one. Deal three times two for each card you exhausted. So I can exhaust one card here safely. Star Barrage was unfortunately on the very bottom of our deck, which is the absolute worst position it could have been in. Oh, definitely should have just been Master Spark there. That's my bad. All right, I'm going to defend, then use all of that damage there. 52 straight up. Not bad. Almost got wiped off the map here, but ultimately seemed to be okay. Snack pack. Every time we play three attacks in a single turn, gain two HP, as well as no. Just like a hard no on those. More bank? No, I have a shop in two spaces. I'll be spending some money there. Rubber ducky. Every time you play a power, gain block equal to three times its cost. Ringing Soul. Definitely don't want that there. Uh, we could take the Casket of Star, which would instantly give us a spark as well. We could also take the Medical Kit, which would allow us to just take as many burns as we want. Yeah, we take that. I really do need some burns to turn up, though. Like, I've been kind of banking pretty hard on these burns. If they don't turn up, we're going to have a real rough time. Let's take a fire potion here because I know that I'm going to go for the rest and then the elite. Yikes. Yeah, well, that's certainly some damage we're about to take. Backline dead, but my god, does it feel like we're just gurgling around the drain here. Single strike on the front line, double defend, I fire potion you, everyone takes four damage at the end of the... We're dead no matter what, right? Because we have to kill at least one of them because we can't just over defend on this turn. And if we kill even one of them, this will deal 8 damage to us. This will deal 4 damage to us. But since this is dealing 4 more damage, like this is the easiest to remove from the field. This represents 14. Or rather 10 if it's alive. Wait, hang on. Consider that I can only kill one of them, right? So this represents 18 if this stays alive. But if this stays alive, it represents 18 as well. Because 14 plus 4 from its death effect and 10 plus 8 from its death effect. So, we're taking 18 damage no matter what. If I triple defend, I'm only just defended enough. Mm-hmm. All right. There we go. Managed to actually get through it. Art of War, if you don't play any attached during your turn, gain an additional energy next turn, as well as we just can't find a burn synergy for the life of us. Oh, that's really frustrating, because this is a deck that actually had the ability to capitalize on that burn synergy, so to miss out on it is really, really discon not disconcerting, but just like disheartening here. Especially because I'm definitely dead right now. There's just no two ways around this one. Oh, well. That's more than okay. That gives me time to find the burn build. Although I'm a little less interested now that I won't have the potato to be working with. Right. Greetings to you as well. Yeah, I'll take my 100 gold here probably. Mm. 
Yeah, no, this this whole first, uh, first floor is a wee bit sucky. Not super into it. Okay. okay we shouldn't have lethal here. Beautiful, we don't. Obviously, I'm not happy not to have the lethal, but I am happy that I wasn't wrong about not having the lethal. Machine gun spark. Ooh. Yeah, it's been a while since I did this build. The upgrading other attacks build. It's actually really potent. So you take attacks that have multiple hits, and then you take cards that upgrade the damage of other cards. And those multiple hits fly off. Do some ridiculous work. You got him. Shoot the moon, luminous strike, and witch of greed. Shoot the moon, remove a random buff from a target. If it's not a boss enemy, deal eight damage. Amplify, remove all buffs, and deal 13 instead. Uh, well, how many effects like that do I have to worry about on this floor? There's no buffs, not really, in this fight. Uh, the... Enemies this floor... I mean, removing the... What's the buff from Gremlin Knob? The Enrage buff from Gremlin Knob? That'd be pretty effective. That's about it. Alright, I don't want to take it this early if it's not going to be contributing enough. <laughs> Interesting. One time each turn, whenever you amplify, uh, activate an amplify effect, you can put an attack card from your discard pile into your hand. No, that's not really our kind of thing. Having a bunch of block on turn one is actually really, really good for this character. Yeah, I'm going to be going with that, and I'll be going with the Sprinkle Star Seal. Yeah. To apply 99 Weakness, because 99 Weakness is just extremely powerful in elite fights and boss fights. Especially for a character who, by design, has a lot of problems generating enough block. Goodbye, Cultist. Hello. Ooh, Robbery. I do like Robbery this early in the game. Deal 7 damage, gain gold equal to the unblocked damage dealt, and the Amplify effect is double the gold that you gain. Okay, so we saw the, the Ring of Sukunoko was really good. Spell Core Light Bash. Uh, lose Rising Sweep, obtain Light Bash. So it's just... It's just a bash, right? That can be played as a, a damage. Spell Core would be interesting. I don't think I've had it before. But I worry that if I don't have Mini Hakuro, am I just going to be screwed? I'm going to try it. Spell Core. Uh, at the start of each combat, gain three orb slots and channel one mana spark. Orb. At the start of your turn, gain three charge up. When evoked, gain energy and five charge up. Certain blue cards can now be obtained. Wild. Okay, this is interesting. So the Mana Spark is going to give us the effect over the course of this. Lovely to see. Do I want to wait? Yeah, I actually probably just want to wait this out. Let the Mana Spark get to a point that we can just instantly nuke the enemy. Or, you know, I could steal 56 gold from you right now. Not bad. But if I defend here, then the mana, the, sorry, the, there we go. Master Spark is just a ridiculous amount of damage this turn. Half the HP of the Lug Ball and really hard to rally against that. Next turn, I could go for the upgraded robbery as well. No, we actually didn't draw it. Lame. All right, there goes Lug Vulin, but here is the more bank. Whenever you climb a floor, gain 12 gold. No gold works when you spend any gold at a shop. Perfect. This is exactly what we're looking for. 
Milky Way, gain five block, draw one card. All attacks in your hand, deal an additional one damage this combat. Upgrade it to get a little bit more block as well as a little bit more damage on those cards. All right, I'm going to use a power potion here because it feels like it's probably going to be relevant. Hey, buys cognition. Whoa, focus effects are going to be really good for us. Of course, what if you play a card that costs zero, increase the... No, we're not going to be doing that often. Hell yeah. Mana spot, go. I love it. Got another Dublin on that damage already. Or rather did. Shouldn't have used it last turn. Uh, Strawberry upon pickup, raise your max HP by seven, as well as just a pass on those, thank you. Rune of Simplicity, strikes and defense can be upgraded any number of times upon pickup, upgrade to randomly. I'm more than happy to do that in the early game. More than happy to take that money off your hands. Right, of course. I keep forgetting that we have spell core rather than mini Hakuro here. A claw? You can start picking up claws here? Wild. I'll be taking an unstable bomb because it works with the build that we've already got. Uh, can't go for that elite, otherwise I'm just going to die. Right, let's get the Sprinkle Star Seal upgraded. I'm going to say that wrong a billion times over, frankly. Okay. Yeah, it could be a hell of a lot worse right there. Excellent, excellent. At least we get the weakness on you. Hell, we also actually get a real amount of money right there. And defense on the turn where we're entangled. You don't always get that, so it's always nice to see. Alright. Probably none of these as well. Actually, you know what? We will go for another unstable bomb. I do want both of those upgraded as soon as possible. We're going to want more Milky Ways and upgrades in this deck as well. I think we actually will just go with that identity. As much as I've evidently been trying to avoid it, it's time to accept it. Uh, we'll go for something slothful here because we'll have some time to lit the charge up build so we can kill the false false lug of Wallen pretty easily. It's also just like straight up decided not to spawn, which is going to make it really easy to kill because it isn't there. Uh, which... I don't know, just seems like it'll be a lot easier to me. That all hit the back line. You are joking. Well, there we go. It's awake now. Okay, none of them can be seen. I'm not on the beta branch anymore, so uh, this one... This one's just a weird one. Well... That, uh, that doubt is showing up every hand so far. I'm really uh, kind of frustrated by it. I need another relic to help me out here. Mercury Hourglass is quite good. Hey, they've all suddenly appeared. Beautiful. Good to see you finally. Yeah, I'm going to go with the three frail here. Feels like if I just don't kill this soon enough, I'm going to be in some real bad place. 
did manage to trigger the kunai there though, which is nice. Take the beasts. And I'm feeling like... Yeah. Feeling like we're probably already screwed. So we managed to get one of them down there. Yeah, nothing really done. Nothing really done. Yeah, we're just extremely deceased here. All right, so what? That's a death just slightly after 20 minutes on Marissa. We did manage to get at the boss, though. We're going to need a less pure archetype, I'm feeling here. Because I keep trying to take the only couple cards that are really fitting to the boss and then just die there. Which isn't doing wonders for my self-esteem. So let's try something else. That's a shame, because I wonder if there would have been any other cards that would have allowed me to generate more orbs of the same type of uh, orb that I already had summoned. That would have been really interesting. But also, it did dilute the ability to pick up Milky Way, which obviously I was supremely looking for. I'll take charging up. I know, I've definitely done this build before. 10 foot pole, take 50% less damage outside of combat. Buggy slots. Whenever an enemy loses exactly 7 HP, whenever a fighter rather loses exactly 7 HP, uh, game critical. Not really our kind of thing. Alt Cloud is really good. There's very few reasons not to take it here. And then I'll also take Robbery because I quite like it. I'm going to take the max HP because having that is pretty good for this character. Damn, upgrade on Oort Cloud in that position. Hell yes. Uh, we'll upgrade Charging up here. All right. Get Oort Cloud out early. We should be in a good position. Should have played the Defend now. I forgot that I have Mini Hakuro, not Spell Book. Should have played the Rising Sweep first there. Mm hmm. Yep, I think I'm going to set up for a quad damage. Nice. With that 12 plated armor, it's not that difficult to do. Come on. One defend and then robbery. Ah, <sighs> do love me that money. And now it's time to just start milling out damage here. Gosh knows, I'm not going to have too long more to do it. Thank heck I had all that plated armor. All right. Oh, this strength down is really, really painful. Looks like we will make it through the fight, but barely. All right. Lost the spark for the kill. It's like Ginger, you can no longer become weakened on this character. Hell yes. Uh, exhaust half of the cards in your discard pile and draw pile. Gain energy and draw a card for every five cards exhausted. There's also the Starlight Typhoon deal... Damage equal to two times the number of cards that cost zero that you played this combat to all enemies. I'm going to take that. I'm going to try and build a zero cost build at this point. Okay. 
Double defend happily there. Get the gold while I can. And now we're set. Luminous Strike costs zero, but it's not really the right kind of deck for it, is it? We have a couple of Amplify effects in the deck, so we could take a Grand Cross just as a little bit of a damage boost. It's another zero cost card as well. Tin Flute. At the end of your turn, uh, sorry, at the end of this run, choose one card in your deck. You start your next run with that card in your deck. Oh, why do I feel like that's not going to work out well for us? All right, could have been a lot worse. Got some reasonable money there. That'll get that done, though. Which is Ley Lion? I'm going to take the second Grand Cross. I don't know what I'm trying to get this build to be, but... Sporeclad would help. Land Flute. Uh, we'll take a Starfruit, because I don't think I've had that one before. I'm still trying to learn about all these. Yikes, not really the fight that I wanted. And definitely not the opening hand we wanted. Really? You are kidding me. Amplify effect, amplify effect, amplify effect. If we had any of those in our hand, both of these Grand Crosses would be ridiculous. But instead, we have none of them in our hand, even after the extra draw. We had more than half of our deck in our hand, and not the right parts. Sorry. Definitely just got to take out the back line there while we can. And set up this sentry. Yeah, two strikes will do it. Strike and a robbery? Just the two strikes, I guess. And we do have a defend next turn. Lovely. So I can defend, robbery, and then Grand Cross. Perfect. That Starlight Typhoon is not really working out in the way that I'd wanted yet. Boomerang, place the first attack card you play each time atop your draw pile. It's like a Witch of Greed is another trigger for the other events. And the Bland Fruit becomes Star Fruit. Upon pickup, raise your max HP by 8. This and all future max HP gains are 50% more effective. Not half bad. All right. Yes, that was a miscalculation on my part. Uh, but if we lose that run, I don't have time to start another run. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of retrofit that turn a little bit there. This spot goes back to the top of the deck. That's robbery, Grand Cross. And then we don't use the Master Spark. Wow. Not a great hand. Should have put the Grand Cross back atop my deck because I do still have Amplify effects in there. Speaking of, there's Oath Clouds. We're not prepared for a turn like this. Well, at least we can't be weakened. All right, now just this spike slam remains. You 
full. Definitely set up the Witch of Greed, obviously. Four damage on the enemy. So four damage takes you down to 25. That's actually just below the split value. Or rather, just above your splitting HP value. Perfect. Easy kills this turn. Yeah, we would not have won that fight if we didn't reload it, so. It's my bad. Blazing Star for the burns in the hand. It's not a burn deck. Satellite Illusion, gain energy when the number of cards in your draw pile increases during your turn. We don't do that. Collecting Quirk, gain, uh, deal nine damage to a random enemy for every four relics you have. Upgrades to for every three relics you have. Uh, like nine twice? Collecting Quirk just isn't good enough at this point to take. Rampaging Magic Tool. Gain energy at the start of each turn. Apply a random buff or debuff to yourself at the start of each combat. They are two frail, two weak, two vulnerable, three poison, and eight charge up. Extra energy is obviously pretty important right here. Uh, and Grand Sneko transforms three cards at the start of your turn. That's just... That's a chaos deck right there. Speaking of Chaos, we haven't had it appear in a shop recently. Just re-rolls all of our... Got poisoned at the start of this fight as well. Uh, just re-rolls all of your available relics into any relics. It's wild. Go. Just enough to kill the frontliner. And now we can continue our rightful assault on the back. Excellent. That'll get that done. And they even get a potion out of it. Lovely. Refraction spark time. No. Temporary HP. Yeah, we probably want it. Okay. So, uh, changes to max HP are 50% more effective. So, we should have really effective changes to the max HP in the bottle tart. Diary. Upon pick up, pick the boss of the axe you're currently on. Probably not really our thing. Resounding Blow is really good. It'll upgrade that Starlight Typhoon constantly. Yeah, we'll take that. We'll also take Vajra. And probably Portable Prop Bag here as well. If not... No, card removal on the Comzi. Yeah. We don't want that just messing up our first draw. Excellent. Not bad, just get that Grand Cross back atop the deck. Ready to use it with our next Amplify effect, which is not here because we don't have it. Damn. Amplify. Uh, I'm going to go for the draw here in order to get an Amplify effect, and we do. Beautiful. Starlight Typhoon is now kind of reasonable. It's definitely getting a lot closer to it. Okay, good resounding blows at least. Put it directly back atop the deck as well. So we draw it again and immediately get two. That's actually really, really good. It's a really good way to pump up this Starlight Typhoon with a resounding blow that you put back atop your deck every single turn. It's just a ridiculous amount of damage for the Shelled Parasite to be capable of doing, frankly. Uh, 
Ouch. Yeah, with that vulnerability still upon us, it feels like that's probably the end of us. I think we had vulnerability on us from the rampaging magic tool here. That's the only thing that really makes sense to me. Okay, Amplify, beautiful, that's really good. So we can use the Oort Cloud here and we'll be able to play the Grand Crosses. That was my only possible saving grace there. There we go. <clears throat> but for the grace of God, go us. I think we should just take... Hmm... Resounding Blow is good for the zero-cost build with the Twilight Star, uh, Starlight Typhoon, rather. And it's also really, really good with Casket of Stars. I think I'll actually push Resounding Blow into my next run rather than an upgraded Oort Cloud, which is really powerful, but I think this has some more interesting things I'll be able to do with it. Until then, though, my name has been Rhapsody, the name of the game. Didn't slay the Spire modded. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we will see you next time.